Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, I'm really excited. I have a feeling we're just going to get exponentially smarter with our guests. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host. You know him, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. And let's talk about our guest. Aaron Scott Young is a renowned entrepreneur with more than 30 years experience and several multi-million dollar companies under his belt. Aaron has made it his life's work to arm business owners with success formulas, which I'm really excited about. We all, we all want that formula that immediately provides exponential growth and protection fully embodying the concept of the unshackled business owner. He inspires others to do the same by empowering them to build strong companies while proactively protecting their dreams. Aaron Scott Young, welcome. Hey, thanks. So nice to be here with you guys. Thanks for having me on. It's a new year. It's going to be a great, it's going, we're going to have a great 2021. Yeah, boy, are, are we ever. So <laughs> uh, it, it's going to be hard to to not beat 2020. Well, especially for, well, from an investment standpoint, I think this is going to be a freaking amazing year. People that are in a position to grow, people that are in a position to scale that aren't so leveraged that they're hanging on by their fingernails, those people are going to be, odds are, are going to become very wealthy in 2021. Okay, well, let's just rewind the tape and let's just talk about wealth and how you were able to build wealth for yourself oh. and not just you know when we talk about wealth like scott and i define wealth as solving not your money not just your money problems but also your time problems is mm -hmm. real wealth to work when you want where you want with whom you want so how'd you how'd you do it first of all i just have to something popped to my mind as you said those words uh, it was Henry Ford who said, most men spend so much time working, there's no time left to make money. And that's really the truth. If you're, if you're in somebody else's, even if it's your company's uh, little trench and you know, and you got your blinders on and, and you're just doing that, you're not in a really good position to find ways of making real money. Uh, you're just trading time for money like a job. So, so did you say, how did I earn, how did I develop my wealth? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I started very young. I won't give you all the play by play, but I started my first company where we had employees like W2 employees when right before my 19th birthday, it was just right oh, wow. before, well, it was about th four months before my 19th birthday, but, uh, right about 19 years old, I, um, we really started to grow and, um, we started the first recycling business in Portland, Oregon and um, built it up. This is back in 1983 and started building that business, hired some guys, bought some trucks, ended up with thousands of clients around the city. Um, then I met this girl I wanted to marry and decided that probably she doesn't want to be married to a, what I considered myself as like a garbage man. And so um, I sold that business. So there I, I sold my first company at 22 and uh, took all the money I made and bought cellular telephones Right. So now we're like 1986 and um, late 86 became one of the first cellular phone dealers in the greater Portland, Oregon Metro, ended up with five stores. And um, then from there, I got recruited to be vice president of sales for a publicly traded multinational. And so at 29, all of a sudden then I was getting cash and stock and stock options. And I stayed there three and a half years realized I was an entrepreneur. I wasn't a, an officer for somebody else's dream. So I left, but I, by then I'd amassed, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in runway, uh, you know, from the stock. And sure. I started buying companies back. That was in 1997. Uh, I started buying businesses and, and fixing them. And, and, um, now I own multiple companies, but I also, uh, have a private equity business and we take companies public. So we do both of those things. So anyway, that's, cool. that's my, that's my last 34 years, 35 years. 
Very cool. Scott Todd, what do you think? Well, I mean, you know, I think it's pretty cool. I think we all have this story, right? Like we have this story where we start off with one direction and then we grow it to another way. There's some catalyst or something in it that kind of takes us to, to the direction that we want to go to. And it's kind of cool to hear to hear uh, Aaron's story as well. So, so Aaron, so when you're looking at a company today mm -hmm. and you're analyzing the company, <clears throat> What are you looking for? What, what in your mind makes for a strong company? So, so I have two different hats that I wear. One of them is helping your company get better. I'm not a consultant, but um, I do some training. And of course we have tens of thousands of business owner clients. So I speak at events and I'm, um, I do some things like that where there may be Kind of, I'll come in and look and try to help. And I do that for private companies and for public companies. And then there's the buyer side of me, the acquirer side of me. So if I'm looking at your business, I'm trying to teach you things that have worked for me to see if, you know, and I've done it enough times, dozens of times, that I know if you follow certain steps, as long as you have a, a business, an idea of a service, whether it's a product or service, if it's viable, in other words, if the market gives a darn about it, if you if you do these things, you have a high likelihood of success. Now, if I'm looking at as an acquirer, then I'm looking at for people who didn't have those skills and their business is now um, handicapped and I can come in and buy it for what uh, in my mind is a discount. I can buy it at a uh, because I know it can be more than it is. And then we put those same principles into place often with a new management team and raise that, raise that up. So the same rules apply, right? Either, either I'm trying to do something for my businesses, I'm trying to teach you how to do something for yours, or I'm going to take yours, um, I'm buy yours from you, and then I'm going to do what I know how to do, and we're going to grow it. And that's the same thing we do with these companies that we take public is we not only support them with money, but we support them with experience, um, both of the public markets and of operational things. So they can become more, because here's the deal. If you have a recipe for um, uh, chocolate chip cookies, if you have a recipe for chocolate chip cookies and you follow the recipe, you're going to get chocolate chip cookies. You're not going to get a tuba. You know, you're not going to get a Chevy. You're going to get cookies every time. But most entrepreneurs have no recipe, they have no formula. They're just groping around. They're mostly keeping their own counsel or they read one book and they go, oh, that's the way to do it. And then they read another book. They go, oh, no, no, forget that. I'm going to go do this. And they're, they're just, you know, it's the proverbial chicken with their head cut off, just running around. There's a lot of activity, but it's getting them nowhere. And that's, you don't have to do that, but that's what most people do. And so that's why there's so many. I think I, the most recent information I read said the average, there are about 25 million people, a little less than that, in the last census that said, they owned a company or were self-employed. So that could be somebody selling Tupperware or it could be Apple, you know, Apple. Sure. Um, and the average, the I, sh I should say the median, the median income was $25,000 for the entrepreneur. Only 4% of companies ever get over $1 million in revenue. Wow. Only 4%. That means almost everybody is... You know, doing, I mean, think about an orthodontist or a landscape company or an architect. They're making, their company's doing less than a million bucks a year, but they're still taking a quarter million dollars out and they're making a nice living, right? And they drive a nice sure. car and they live in a good neighborhood, but they're still small. People think, oh, they, they name off Damon John or something like that. They go, oh, they're a billionaire. They're not a billionaire. Damon John made $35 million on FUBU, Right. It was not yeah, a billionaire. Right. He had 35 million, but guess what? That separates you so dramatically from the crowd that people think you're freaky, unbelievably wealthy. There's hardly anybody that's that rich. Um, but most people are, are living here. And so if, the, if somebody's making 150, 250, 500,000 a year, they're, so, they're living such a different lifestyle that the average human thinks, oh, they must be a billionaire. But the, right. it's only because right. the person that's making... 50, 70, 100 
they don't they they can't conceive of making four or five hundred thousand they can't conceive of having that house driving those cars going on that vacation right but the the only thing that's different is that people that are making money typically have learned if i do these things i get a certain result yeah so scott and i are smiling because this is literally what we teach our clients in flight school and scott literally uses the same exact phraseology follow <laughs> the recipe well scott you're a brilliant man and well it, it doesn't matter what industry you're in either if you're a real estate investor and you're not just um stupid and you know fat and stupid let's just say i have money but i have no clue what i'm doing everybody can make right. money in a good market right everybody makes money it's the people that figure out how to kind of not be greedy they're not trying to time the market i've made enough on this deal now i'm going to get out i'm going to put some money on the side i'm going to look for deals that fit my criteria i'm not just going to jump in to something that sounds good right a lot of a lot of real estate investors are one person operations you know it's somebody with money rinse and repeat rinse and repeat right um but like I said, everybody before 08, everybody was crushing it in real estate. Anybody. Right. And then, I mean, I've got one friend who lost over $100 million in the 08 crash in his real estate. Just he was too leveraged and it lost it all. And he was laying on the floor in his closet contemplating suicide. You know, it's I had a bunch of friends out here like that. They were like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Go, well, anyway, I, I, get, I start to pontificate. I'm sorry, Mark. Go, where, where do we want to go with this conversation? It's useful. Well, you know, S Scott already brought out the Duncan Hines uh, box to show, yeah, to show the... Like, I mean, like, uh, this, I take it to heart, man. Like, <laughs> and seriously, to heart. I got the Duncan Hines box here, and I always talk about, like, the recipe, right? Like, you follow the recipe, and it will probably come out like this, maybe, right? Like, okay, not exactly, but close enough. And... I would just say that, you know, one of the things, one of the challenges I think that entrepreneurs have is, you know, they want, people want to scale, right? Like that's the first thing I see a lot of people, the people that we teach Mark, like the first thing they want to do is they want to scale this thing. And I always tell them like, calm down, calm down. I know you want to scale it, right? Like the subway wanted to scale too, to 8,000 or 10,000 restaurants. It's okay. But the reality is, is that you've got to build the foundation first, right? So, you know, like you just can't, in our business, we start mailing. I see people that are like, I just want to mail 10,000 letters this month. Well, that's, ha, huh, I want to laugh at you, right? Like that's, it, it's a good goal, but you don't know what you're doing. You know, like you got to slow down and you got to build the recipe. Like I can teach you a recipe on how to do this, but then you've got to go bake the cake first, right? Like I, I can teach you this thing, but then you got to go and you got to practice it a few times. And then when you start to practice it, then you start to build your speed. And when you can start to build your speed then you can go scale. So Aaron, I'd love to know when someone comes to you and they're like, listen, I want to go from like zero to a million dollars in sales in one year or 1.257 years. What do you do? What do you tell them? How, how do you get them to slow their, their jets a little bit? Well, well, the first thing, okay. So you, I teach this class called the unshackled owner. And it basically is that it's my recipe that I've used over and over again. And I'm, I'm not trying to pitch the, the class, but, um, the first thing we do is we say, okay, I'll just give you the, the steps that we use over and over and over again. First one is vision. Now vision has been kind of turned into sort of like a buzzword in personal development, you know, uh, where people kind of go, yeah, yeah, whatever, let's get past that. But no, in my world, we have to know how are we going to define success, right? What, so that person says 1.275 million, right? That's what you just said. So, okay, so why, why is that the number? What, what is it that is going to be the physical manifestation of what it is you're trying to do, right? So don't just make up this, these BS numbers. The numbers mean nothing. What is it you want? What's the life you're trying to live? And don't be vague about it, be explicit about 
defining the finish line so you know when you get there, right? That's class number one as we talk about, let's get super clear on what, what the outcome is. And usually a dollar figure is not usually really what somebody wants, right? That's first. Second thing is, now let's go to your second part. Oh, let's mail 10,000, right? So I say, okay, so let's just think about it. if this is what you want to build up here, this is the big outcome. Let's define what does the, the structure underneath that in my world, it would be what is the organizational chart of the company need to look like in order to be at that place. So in order, if you're going to mail 10,000, what's your response rate going to be? If it's um, uh, 1%, that would be a hundred, right? So if you had a hundred legit prospects come back at you in a month's time, how would you handle the phone calls? How would you have a meaningful conversation? How would you check out what they're do? I mean, how would you do it? How would you physically have time? And are you working a W-2 job? Is this all gonna happen after 6 p.m. at night? You know, and how many hours, so can you only talk to people between six and eight before it's kind of inappropriate, right? I would start thinking about what is the, what is underneath getting that result? Because you have to figure out how you're gonna do it. And if you can't do it on your own, then you have to bring in the right people. So how people usually suck at hiring, they're horrible, horrible at hiring and they're worse at managing. And so um, I use something I learned uh, kind of at the very beginning of Stephen Covey's career. I got to go to a small training with him and I really, I gleaned a lot and it was early in my career. And um, he uses a system, DGRAC, Desired results, guidelines, resources, accountability, and consequences for success or failure. So we write job descriptions saying, here's the desired result. Not you're going to be in sales, but you're going to sell this thing to this market, this many in this time period. This is the desired result that we want. What are the guidelines? Well, here are the hours we work. Here's the cards you hand out. Here's the dress code. What are, um, what about resources? Here's the list. Here's the computer. Here's the CRM. Here's the uh, whatever. Here's the training accountability. Here's you're going to report to me or you're going to give turn in this thing each day. What's the consequence? Well, if you are successful, here's what can happen for you. If you're unsuccessful, it's not just get fired. It's maybe retrain or move you to a different position, or maybe it's let you go, but we have to bring people in to help us be more arms and legs for us and we have to give them explicit guidelines of here's what i need from you i'm hiring you to be an extension of me and here's why because i don't have enough time to answer all those phone calls to write all those letters to um send the follow-up documents to go through and call through the ones that look like they fit our criteria or don't right so i need somebody so i have to bring the right person in the next thing we teach is how to keep score. So I know and you know every day how you're doing. And, and I, I don't have to wonder and you don't have to wonder and you know exactly what I'm measuring. Not I'm not sneaking up behind you and going, why didn't you do that? And you were supposed to like read my mind that I wanted you to do it even though I never told you to. And even though we never said we're going to measure that. That's how most owners do it. They go, I don't know how to do accounting, so I'm going to hire somebody for accounting. And then when they don't present me with exactly what I wanted, I go, what the hell's wrong with you? I hired you to do this. Well, that's not fair. And all that does is diminish your relationship with that accounting person versus coming and saying, here's exactly what I need. I don't know how to do it. That's why I hired you. Let's work together and you teach me how I get what I need and you can do it using generally accepted accounting principles, right? So you do that and, and you keep score because I'm measuring these four things and you know it and I know it and every day we look at it and we all know if we're going the right direction or not. Then we say, okay, as we grow and we add more people, how do I, how do I get to go and explore other real estate projects, other corporate projects, go take care of my parent with Alzheimer's disease, go, you go on a mission trip or whatever your, whatever floats your boat. Um, how can I be a way and know that these things are still happening. Well, first thing we do is we build a great culture. 
that speaks to our values and what we stand for and what we stand against and how we do things, how we address each other, how we address our customers and our vendors. So that that's the glue that holds everything together. Then we want to make sure we have great financials and great dashboards so we can see, you know, you started off, Mark, I said, we said, how are you doing? You're like, well, you know, uh, pulse is good. Respirations are good, right? You started doing that. Right. And I thought, right. okay, that's that little, at the hospital, we have a little monitor right by the bed. Here's your pulse. Here's your blood oxygen. Here's your blood pressure, right? Right. Because that tells us, are we alive or dead? Are we dying or are we, are we okay right now? Are we stable? Well, you need that for your business. You need that for your business. I can't look at everything, but I, look at, I can look at two or three or four things a day or a week or whatever your cycle is to know, are we going the right way or are we kind of slowly dying, right? But if you don't know even what to look for, you might just be really surprised when the market crashes and you go, ah, my blood pressure just fell down to nothing. My pulse is, is thready, right? I can't survive like this. Anyway, and the last thing you do is as you get bigger, you, you bring on some other lieutenants to kind of help manage. And, and we have to teach entrepreneurs how to let those people run their part of the business without looking over their shoulder. Because remember, you hired them because they're better at that thing than you are. So you need to let them grow and expand. The, best, the most successful entrepreneurs are not the ones that know how to do everything in the company, in my experience. They're the ones that know how to manage experts and let those people be experts and not step all over them. Let them, let them run. And here's the deal. Everybody goes, well, yeah, but what if that great sales director, that great marketing person, that great accounting person, that great CFO, what if they steal my business? Well, that's just stupid. They're not going to do that. Otherwise, they would have been the one starting the business. They would have been the one taking the risk up front. They would be the one having to make the payroll. They don't want that. They don't want that. All they want to do is be seen and heard and considered and you do some of their things and you don't step all over their toes and you let them run. And those people will make you rich and they'll make a great living as, and they'll be happy. They'll never leave because they're getting to be an entrepreneur inside the business. They've had freedom like they've never had. And they see that their boss re responds to them. Those people will make you rich. If you follow a formula and don't micromanage, don't be the bottleneck, you'll do great. It doesn't matter what. I've been in recycling. I've been in electronics. I've been in financial services. I've been in business services. I've been in private equity. And then I've helped companies in, I mean, everything you can think of. And guess what? Same rules apply. Same formula applies every time. Every time. Scott, Scott and I are smiling because we literally hit on every, like every part of that formula that we literally hit on in, in our own program. And I mean, it's the, even, even to the point of accounting, back. like Scott even has an accounting class teaching people how to talk to their accountant. Yeah. So you, mean, know why, you know why we're doing it? And you know why we're the ones on here and other people are listening is because when you find out how things actually work, it's not a mystery. It's just almost nobody will follow a formula and nobody really ever learns. But if you've learned it, is it any wonder that it's almost identical? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's funny, Mark, because uh, I, he was bringing up some great points, right? So like when I was hiring my first um, uh, sales manager, I was scared. I was scared of this particular person. Like I felt that this particular person was really, really good. And I'm like, this person is really, really good. And oh my gosh, I'm gonna teach her what I know. And she's going, these are in my brain. She's going to leave and she's going to compete against me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her my secrets, uh, like secrets, if you will, my knowledge. And yeah. she's gonna go compete against me. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's just think about this for a minute. One, if she was gonna do that, and what really scared me was that she had just finished like doing her own business, right? Like she told me I've been an entrepreneur and all this other stuff. And I'm like, but if she really wanted to do this, she wouldn't even be really talking to me. And so I talked myself, I was, I, I was able to talk myself that kind of stinking thinking, if you will. I don't know what, what else to call it. I talked myself- There's out. a reason she's coming to you. She sees you as somebody with dollars. 
Right, there you go. And she doesn't <laughs> want to deploy. And after all these years, she guess what? You're right. Here's what's happened. She's made me a lot of money. Okay, like she's really, really good. Made me a lot of money. In the meantime, she's made herself a lot of money. Okay, so, and and I was I was thinking like the, the best job that I ever had in my entire career is when I worked when I worked at Hertz, right? I worked at Hertz on the car. And what made it the best job for a very long time is that the management structure or philosophy there was that they wanted you to be able to bring your ideas and and like bring these ideas and they would do it. Like if it was a good idea, you could do it. So you could be that, I forgot what you said, the entrepreneur. In, in, yeah, the entrepreneur inside the company. Right. And so I always felt like that I could I could bring my ideas and I could go and deploy this thing or I could I could do this thing or they were accepted. And I think that that's one of the pieces that a lot of people uh, miss when they're hiring hiring people is one, you have to create that culture because without creating that culture, then you then you become a micromanager. And the other piece, and this is what we talk about in flight school too, is if you hire somebody to go do something, they pick whatever the job is. You go hire them to go do it. Immediately, the brain of the entrepreneur says, or the untrained entrepreneur would say, well, it's off my list. You go do it. And then you produce a crappy quality product. The yep. person produces something that's crap. And then you're like, you don't know anything. You're an idiot. Well, it's not that they're an idiot. You didn't do a good job of explaining to them right. what it is that you wanted. And you probably took this bucket of dumpy work that you hate anyway, and you dumped the dirty work on them, as opposed to, look, here's the vision for the job. And then I'd like for you to do this. So one little micro task of the entire project, just give them one piece of information. Yeah, yeah. and that's why, I I say, you know, that's why I say, you know, you're gonna do a hundred things this week, right? Between today's meeting and next week's sales meeting, you're gonna do a million things. You're gonna have all these phone calls. You're gonna have all these, Lots going to happen. What are the three or four massively important outcomes that you will get done that are going to be the most important thing in moving us towards the goal? I know you're going to be busy. So let's pick out, you tell me, you tell me, what are three or four massively important outcomes that you're going to commit to getting done between this week and next week that will be the thing that moves, moves you closest to the goals that we've set for the quarter, right? Because if you just give them all the crap or you give them too much, then they can go, well, I did this. This was you know, easy for me. I did all this, but it wasn't necessarily what really helped the business the most. The more explicit you are about your instructions and why, if they understand what the, why they make a difference in the business, why getting this done moves it's like a little gear you know this little thing is going to move this big wheel and this is something you're going to do and you are especially this younger generation they want to be part of a win they want to see that they're making a difference they don't want to just be in a cubicle and here stamp these papers they don't want that they want to know why their life matters inside this work so if you can explain that to them they will come up with all kinds of ideas keith cunningham says you know most companies hire your arms and legs, but the goal is to win over your head and your heart, right? If you can get people to give you, give you their head and their heart, their ideas, their motivation, their commitment, their love, they're going to way exceed your, your expectations. If you no, just I, say, I love that. Just shut up and do your work. Like, you know, here I'm at McDonald's, two squeezes of ketchup, here you both the buns in for 15 seconds. Okay. That's arms and legs. That's robots. You want to, right. if you give people a safe place, you said something a minute ago, Scott, and, and I all of a sudden had this vision of a seed that could grow into whatever, a stalk of corn or an oak tree or whatever you want it to be. The seed is the seed. That's the employee. They have potential. So are you going to put them in rocky ground or are you going to give them a nice fertile place to grow? If you give them those, those Stephen Covey things, desired results, guidelines, resources, accountability, and consequences, that's fertile soil and you listen to them, you coach them, and you don't just dump all your crap on them, the odds are they're gonna grow and they're gonna grow like miracle grow. They're gonna grow fast and big. 
But if you if you keep them in the dark, you keep them in bad soil, they're going to eventually either you know blow away, go somewhere else, or they're going to die. And there's no reason for I don't know. I, I just that analogy is kind of a biblical thing, but I but I kind of I don't know. I just went off on a tangent. Anyway, my bottom line is I love everything you just said. I think we're preaching to the choir here to each other. So folks listening, there there's there's experience here on this training right now. And what we're all saying is, even though we've come to it separately, we, we don't, the three of us don't, well, I don't know you guys. Um, the reality is this is truth. So when you follow a proven formula, you will get a predictable outcome. And as Scott said, the cake might not be as beautiful at the first time as the one that's on the box, but it's still going to be a yellow cake. It's still going to have chocolate frosting, right? And over time, you'll learn to do things to make slight improvements to where you all your friends go, man, you're magic. How do you make such a beautiful product? And the thing is, is that you follow the formula. And then once you learn as one of I used to be, I used to do a lot of music. I used to travel around. I, I was paid to sing. I travel all over the US and Canada. And one of my accompanists uh, who ran the band when I was young, maybe around 19, she said to me one time, because I was, I didn't really read music, so I kind of would m make it up a little bit. And she said something beautiful. She said, Aaron, learn the sheet music. And after you've learned the sheet music, then you can improvise. And that's right. the same thing we're talking about here. Follow the formula. And once you know the formula, then you can iterate on it to make it right for your exact world that you're creating. I, I love that. I love that. Well, Aaron, we're at that point now in the podcast and your mentorship has been invaluable but we're going to ask you for one more tip a website a resource a book something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses improve their lives what do you got well i can tell you i have a million things i would love to tell them but let me just say this um uh and i don't know when this is being recorded i mean i, I know when it's being recorded i don't know when it's going to play but if it's not going to mess you guys up too much, I'll just say we're at the beginning of the year. Today is the 5th of January. Um, at the beginning of the year, and I just did this a week and a half ago, I go back and I either reread or re-listen to The Richest Man in Babylon. And I'm sure you guys know that book. But I'm again, sure. it's truth. And especially for people who, um, many of your clients, many of them may own businesses or they may be working jobs, but they're taking their su surplus income and they're investing it and becoming a, a real estate investor. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So the principles taught in the richest man in Babylon are an easy way to think about how to manage money, how to manage debt, how to manage relationships, how to look at the long game and how, when you look at the long game um, and, and you follow a recipe, here's the thing, folks, let me just say, your, if you follow a recipe and if you don't get greedy or stupid and you just do things that are reasonable, don't try to get rich quick. If you're making 10, 15, 20% on an investment, that's great. Celebrate. Don't think you have to double and triple every year. If you follow a proven recipe and you aren't greedy, you will be surprised at how fast your wealth grows. And you'll be amazed at how many people are watching you that you don't know are watching you. And they go, oh, I see what that Mark guy is doing. Maybe I should go and, and offer Mark the money I have to help me with the investment. Or maybe Mark can help me with this other big project I'm doing. Because when, when people see that you're, you're being responsible and you're being a little aggressive, you're not afraid, you know, you're leading out but you're doing things in a smart way and you're having some success, all of a sudden, everybody wants to hitch their wagon to your star because most people have no clue what's going on, no clue what to do next, and they're desperately seeking guidance. And many of the loudest voices out there offering guidance are kind of shysters. They're, they're just trying to get your money. And so when you see somebody who's actually got the trappings not just oh, I'm on my private jet, you know, or, or I'm getting on a private jet. They rented it for a photo shoot. 
right? Right. When you see people who really have good relationships, good businesses, uh, they've been doing it for a while and they seem to be legit and they don't have to scream about how rich they are. Those are usually the ones that know what they're doing. Follow those people. Richest Man in Babylon gives you all of the foundation to know what to look for, how to act, what to do so that you can grow wealth. All right, Richest Man in Bob Babylon. But before we get to Scott's uh, tip of the week, I do want to just give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's going to take you up there quickly, safely, efficiently. He's done it thousands of times. Just follow the recipe like we've been talking about. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Oh, and by the way, the investment ain't going to cost you nothing. We guarantee you follow the recipe, show us your work. You're going to make back that, in, that investment 180 days or less, guaranteed. Landgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, before I get my tip of the week, I just want to tell you, I, I got an email the other day from uh, somebody. Uh, they, they were actually asking me about the Landmoto writing pens, you know, like the pens that I have, the Landmoto, they were asking me about it. And I was like all excited, like, oh my gosh, someone wants one of these pens. I mean, I, it's pretty, pretty kind of cool, right? They wanted to know where the pin came from uh, so they could put it for their other business, whatever, no problem. But one of the things that they said in the email was that they had paid for everything already, including their coaching, all with the, the land deals that they had done. They're, they're like net neutral or price neutral, if you will, in terms of their investment. From here on out, it's all gravy. That's a beautiful email to, to get and to receive, right? Like, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, you know, take action, like take action. You can execute on it as well. You know, the, uh, I would just say that the tip of the week that I would have this week is a book. Okay. It's, um, it's one, it's, it's not a newer book. It's an older book, but I've been enjoying listening to it. It's from 2018 dare to lead brave work, tough conversations, whole hearts by Brene Brown. Yeah. Brene Brown has had a, has had a moment. If you haven't seen her Ted talk on vulnerability, she went viral with that. She's got a bunch of great books. Um, and that's actually one of the books I have not read, which I should read. Bring it up. Dare to lead. Um, well, my tip of the week is going to, again, reinforce about building real wealth, not just solve your money problems, solve your time pr uh, problems, become that unshackled business owner, learn more. Go to AaronScottYoung.com. I have a link to it, AaronScottYoung.com. Aaron Scott Young, are we good? Oh my gosh, thank you guys for having me on and letting me, I, I tell you, I, I desperately, I've made enough money now. And I, I think the biggest ripple that I can make in the world is helping people just build stronger businesses that make more money and stay in business longer because they're the ones that go out and sponsor the little league team and you know give to the charities and pay for healthcare for their employees. And you guys gave me another chance to talk a little bit about that recipe that I know works and that you guys know works. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Scott Todd, are we good? Good, Mark. All right. I want to remind the listeners the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like an Aaron Scott Young is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. So please do that. It really helps. Um, you ready, Scott? Yeah. One, two, three. Let freedom, freedom ring. Yeah. Okay. Aaron's like, oh, I don't know. I know that I like, like that. Freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Thanks, it's all guys. about freedom. All right. Thanks, everybody.